to today's talk in the series of talks on adaptive adaptive methods. And we're very happy to have Mark Oliver Kahn here from the field of Munich. And uh, perhaps Jürgen who suggested Mark Oliver can say a couple of words. Yes, so uh, so I got to know him from research. So he's doing research on smart spaces, Internet of Things kind of stuff. But then last year we organized a luxury event, a seminar to talk about how to make teaching computer networking better or different, or hopefully better. <laughs> <laughs> and so he attended the seminar and we started talking about his iLab experience and the tools that he has built. And I thought this might be useful to share here. Yes, Mark, Great. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Arvid. Thank you, Jürgen. As Jürgen already said, I will tell you something about the island experience here. And this is a project that I started back in 2003 already. And uh, one motivation for that one is that the amount of students is growing. So this is something that we constantly encounter in Munich. At the same time, the amount of instructors stays the same. And the problem is that this typically leads to a decrease in teaching quality. One could also change the equation here by saying, okay, um, we can keep the teaching quality, but then we have to spend a lot of time in the teaching. And this was exactly my motivation. And today I want to talk a little bit about if this equation has to hold through, uh, true, or if we can do something with tool support to have good teaching that scales while we do not need so many more instructors, which is probably also something that you encounter in your teaching activities. <coughs> um, a little bit background to me. So I studied computer science with computer graphics and media science in Tübingen, I have a PhD from the Technical University of Munich. I'm currently pursuing my habilitation there. And um, also related to what I talk today, I'm directing the digital teaching activities of the Academy Franco Ramon. And my research focus, as you already said, is indeed Internet of Things. So there I'm active in the secure and autonomous management and also digital teaching. So this is, while this one is the thing where I also did my PhD, um, this one has always been my passion. So when I started my PhD, I was even thinking, okay, I just want to focus on the teaching and don't want to do anything. Okay, so a little bit background to the course that I'm talking about today. So those people of you doing computer networks might know this book, it's by Jörg Lieberherr. It's called Mastering Networks and Internet Lab Manual. And um, this one is a typical instructive manual for so-called lab courses in computer science. What is a lab course in computer science? A lab course is <coughs> you get some background information and then you do some hands-on. So you put your hands on the machines, you do real cabling, and then you solve some real-world problems. So this is a typical lab course in computer science, different from other sciences where you might do something else in a lab course. And this setting is particularly interesting to me because it enables people to learn something and then to practically apply it. And this is very nice. Because this is, this is, to me, somehow an ideal way of teaching. So I can teach them something, then they can study something, and then they can experiment with it. And then they have all the three phases where they learn something. And it turns out that this is a quite effective way in teaching people things. And also, we will also see it later. A nice thing is that people often come to me years after the course and say, like, okay, from university I don't remember much. But the stuff from your course, I can really practically apply it because this is something with computer networks that I have to do other, later again. And also there I learned a lot of other things. Like debugging is also an important skill that people get in these courses. Okay, so the, this one was the starting point in 2003. I attended such a course myself. And then from that on I renewed the course. It's currently still running in Tübingen. Then in 2008 I moved to uh, Munich. There it's running as a course, I established a second course, and currently I'm establishing a third course, a massive open online course, um, also around those topics. And uh, the thing that is together with all those courses is they're all lab courses, they're about computer networks and distributed systems. 
they reached more than 2,000 students since 2003, which is quite a portion of the students in the computer network in Germany. And they all are blended learning. And I will talk more about this blended learning and this strategy that I'm running there. So this is just a setting where I'm currently applying the concepts I'm talking to you about today. In 2003, um, what we did was the following. We got pages from this book that says, okay, you should take this router, configure it the following way, save the data on the floppy disk here, and hand it in later, and write a written report. Okay, so this was a typical course in 2003. So we had some handwritten or better formatted hand ins later, and this is what was happening. And uh, as for the year later, I was the one who was responsible for running this course. I thought, like, okay, this works for maybe four students or something like that, but when it goes beyond that, it's quite difficult to do this, especially this handwritten correction thing here. And uh, yeah, I identified two things that I didn't like that much. So it does not scale. It's inefficient because the problem was it took too much time for the students. So this was the first time run. So maybe saying something to the book. So this is a book that is running in Canada where the people have much, the students have much more time for these lab courses. With us, so at QM, this is a, um, um, 10 ECTS course, that means they have about 13 hours per week that they can spend on this on this course. And the course from, from Jörg Hübehead was more like uh, 40 hours a week. So I was basically always in the lab. At the same time, all the topics that were covered were very interesting. So I thought, okay, I want to keep the topics, but I want to make it a little bit more efficient. So this was a problem from the student perspective. And from the corrector perspective, of course, it took too much time. Because correcting all these things was... Um, yeah, it was just not efficient. And also the problem was there was not enough guidance for the students, so it was easily possible that students get lost and they don't reach the learning goals that I wanted them to learn. And then I, I looked at, okay, I mean, I was in the lucky position that there were no real established e-learning systems in 2003, or like also in the bad position, of course. And so I could really start on the, on the green field and start developing something. And so I developed my own e-learning tool where I also implemented the concepts that I wanted to have. And when I talk about concepts today, so you can also use existing tools today like Moodle, or if you want, you can also use my tool, which is also on GitHub. Um, but the concepts are similar to the ones that you have in the other tools. And I want to talk about three things today, about the teaching methodology, the tools, and briefly about the content. So I think the focus is here not on the content, but I briefly want to say something about it. And what is all together for, for the entire teaching concept is these two aspects here, listen and improve. So as I started out doing this as a student back then, the good thing was that I was still in the student community and I could always get the feedback from the students. And I always try to get that and then improve the material, and then get more feedback. And this is maybe the first very important thing. So in my courses, I always try to encourage people to give me feedback. So I run a discussion with them every lecture. So you will see that I will have a lecture, I have a lecture each week with different assignments each week. And so in every following week, I discuss with them about the previous um, assignment. Then I have in the e-learning tool, I have feedback boxes and I always encourage them to tell us something. And when they give us feedback, I give them positive feedback in return, telling them, okay, we improved the things that he told us. And this works very well, because this helps to iterate through the material and make it more so-called stable. Maybe as an anecdote to that. So it took, took me about maybe four to, four to six years to get the teaching material stable by starting from scratch. And Stable means before people had lots of questions, how to do the exercises and so on. And after that time, so now um, people are doing the practical courses that we have there and they have almost no questions because the material is so clear and so focused that it's just running. And so now it's interesting because now I have the opposite job. I have to foster that they interact with us because it's so running on its own. And so these very important things. I want to start with the methodology. And maybe the most important thing is motivate, motivate, motivate. 
So I implement that the students get a reward during the learning. And uh, that especially includes also the exercise design. So that the exercises are on the one hand challenging, so that they really have to think about what they do. So uh, uh, to give an example, so they have to configure a network and then it seems like certain operations like pinging certain hosts should work. And then a typical question is, okay, so one would expect that this and that works, so why doesn't it work? So these are typical questions that are challenging on the one hand because people have to think about it. So they are not just reproducing paste the command ABC, but thinking about, okay, why does something not work and explain it. And at the same time, um, they, they have so much guidance that in this corridor they can think like, okay, so this is now what we, what we have to think about. And then when, it, when the exercise continues, they know immediately if they thought right or not, because the exercise is continuing in two certain directions. And this is, for instance, one very relevant aspect, so that they get freedom in the exercise to think and discuss things with their team partners, so they're always in teams of two. And at the same time, they get enough guidance so that they don't get lost. Because when they get lost, it's not efficient anymore for them. <coughs> Second aspect, diversity in teaching. So this includes methods. So using different teaching methods like discussion, multiple choice questions, free text, and so on. Different tools. So having lots of e-learning, as you will see. Feedback, moderation, different settings. So group setting, individual setting, team setting, and also different formats. So in the lab course, they have lectures, they have self-preparation, and they have practical exercises. And I call this one diversity because it's, um, you get information from different perspectives through different people, and this is stimulating. And this helps so the people learn better. Okay. So what is now this setting I'm talking about? So one of the, one of the courses has typically about 10 assignments, and each is assignment has this schedule here. So it starts with a lecture. Then we have one to three hours individual preparation that the people do inside an e-learning system wherever they have internet. And then we have one day for the practical part where they are at TRAM in our laboratory site that I will also show you later, where they are in teams of two people and where they do things inside the e-learning environment and with the physical machines that we have here. Maybe a word to the, to the setting. So um, this is the group setting. So there, they're together with the others. This is motivating them. Okay, others are also doing things here. This one is done alone on purpose because I have teams of two people and chances are quite high that people are not on the same level regarding a certain topic. And therefore, I put them into the individual preparation mode where they can try to level up. So the one that is lower can get more information by just reading more stuff. So we offer them information and then they can do self-service there. At the same time, they also get feedback, as we will see during this period already. And here then, they are in the setting of two people. They also have two monitors, two mice, and two keyboards, and access to all the computers in the, in the setup. And the setting of two people, I chose that one in contrast to having three people, for instance, because when you have two people, chances are quite low that someone is not performing at all. Because they have to discuss together and the grade for this practical part also comes as a team grade. So they have to discuss and then write down answers in the e-learning system. Then also an important element is this one here, individual oral exam. So they have these 10 assignments and after five of the assignments we have an individual oral exam. And this from a teacher perspective is very important because when you think about learning, they heard about the topic here for the first time. Here they looked at it for the second time. Here they looked at it for the third time. And for preparing this one here, they have to look at it for a fourth time. And this is very, very helpful. Okay. Also important, when I started designing this workflow, I wanted to get rid of additional reports. Like when you did the practical part, you then have to write your lab journal, how it would be called in chemistry, for instance. So with us it was similar because we did the practical part and then we had to write our lab journal. In the e-learning workflow now, everything is inline. So they get instructions and then they get questions, they answer them while they go through the instructions and then 
when they went through all the instructions, they are actually done. So this is good because this means they can spend more time on the actual work that they do there and they don't have to spend the overhead time in writing the journals afterwards. So how do the three phases look like? So this is the lecture setting, this is the e-learning setup, and this is one of the computers where they do something. Um, yeah, I could give a, another full talk about the, this environment here because there, of course, in computer science, you have to provide an environment that enables you to do reproducible experiments. And uh, yeah, this is what we have here. And uh, now coming to the, to the methodology. So these are the three elements again. So we have the lecture, we have the pre-lab, and we have the lab. And I put this one as an upside down triangle because in the lecture I give them the broad information about a certain topic. And then in the pre-lab, they can focus more on the things that are then relevant for the practical part. And then in the lab, they of course only have a small portion that covers those things that are practically done. And so the scope is from broad to more narrow here. At the same time here in more context, here are more details. When it comes to exercise design, the most important thing is that you as a teacher know what you want to teach. And uh, therefore it also says here constructive alignment, which means that you should think about which are your learning goals, which, is the, which are the tools that you have available, so which are the things that you want to teach in which way, and then being aware of that and creating, creating the learning material with that in mind, so that people really reach then the learning goals. And as you can see here, some of the learning goals are covered by the lecture, some are covered by the pre-lab, and some are only covered by the lab. So a typical thing that is covered here is using a certain tool. So this is nothing that I will, cover, that will do in the lecture, but this is something that they will get now here and they will also run in the practical part. Another important thing is the exercises always have a story. So people get something like, okay, you're the web administrator of a big company, XYZ, and you are in trouble. The web server is down, fix it. And then we start, and then they get a big picture at the beginning. So we want to do a journey with the ship here. And then they think, okay, so the big thing, I can never manage that. And then step by step, they get through this journey. Important here is that you do not fall into a cooking recipe mode, giving them tutorial style instructions like enter the following command, enter the following command, but rather giving them high level instructions. You want to achieve that, look at the following tools and master it on your own because this is much more active learning than when they just follow the instructions. Okay. Another important aspect is this one here, learn from each other. So I always encourage the students to support each other during the course. So if we are, for instance, the course, then I have my team partner, and then I tell them, okay, when you're in the lab room, so there are typically seven student teams, and you have trouble, just ask the other student teams because it's totally fine for me to help each other. The questions are not in a way five plus five, what is the result? The questions are look at something, master it, and then discuss with your team partner why it's like that and write me an answer. And this turns out to work very well. And this is also very important to get the workload on the ones doing the tutoring much lower. Because when the people know, okay, we can support each other and it's even allowed here, then they really do that. And so this is a very efficient way of doing it. Of course, we are still reachable. So whenever they have trouble, then they come to us. But as said before, this rarely happens. So I had to introduce two semesters ago, even a ticket system that makes it one click for them to do specific queries to us because they just didn't interact. And so now it got a little bit more again, which is um, good also. So this is actually, so I was telling Arvid at, at lunch, so this is actually something I'm looking at at the moment. How do I, do I get more into contact with the students again in this distant learning scenario? Because I have them in the e-learning tool after the lecture, and then they interact there, and then they're in their peer group with their team partner. And how do I get more feedback? And so one thing I'm looking at, for instance, is putting in emoji feedback, that they can say, okay, I liked it, 
I disliked it, and something like that. So it's not implemented yet, but there I expect also interesting, interesting results. Again, for improving my exercise. <coughs> Another thing as a side note that I also do is um, I try to track the time, how much time they spend for which parts of the exercise by just looking at the interaction scheme with this online tool here, which I can do because I just created the tool. And this is also very interesting to see if the distribution of credits to the amount spent is fair or not, or where there are problems in an exercise that you can solve them. Okay. Now, putting, putting the concept on one slide. So the first thing is the lecture. Then the next thing is this pre-lab, as you have teams of two people, they do this individual here. And then comes something that is important, that is only possible because of, you have this, because of having this e-learning environment. There's an artificial barrier here. A problem when I myself took the course was that I was in a team of three people, and one of those was almost never prepared. And it was horrible to work with, I mean, it was not horrible, it was you could just ignore the student, but it was bad for the student because he did not learn anything. <clears throat> and it was bad for the team because the other two had to carry this student through the course. And this is why I thought, okay, I don't want to have that. I thought it was a problem of the student, so I thought, okay, the problem was the student did not prepare because no one forced the student to prepare. And this is why here I put an electronic barrier that forces the students to prepare. It's technically quite simple. So in this here, you have different virtual pages where you have information. And in these pages, you have multiple choice questions. And in order to be allowed to do the practical part, you have to have answered all the multiple choice questions. It will have three answering attempts for the multiple choice questions. The system is even noticing what they answered the last time, and it's not allowing them to answer the same again if it was wrong. So that means even if they don't want to answer, which some students actually do, they still have the time investment to cheat, or not to cheat, but to choose answers three times wrongly. Another thing that I do here is I always shuffle the answers. So that means when I want to cheat, so I'm with Arvid in the team and he already answered, he can tell me the answers, but he can not tell me like the one and the four are the correct ones. He can only really tell me the answer, which actually means those again were the same things. This technical career was something that was really exciting for me to see because I thought, okay, people will start protesting. But in fact, they did not. So it was okay, the system is doing something, the system is fair, the system just doesn't show us the practical part if we didn't answer all, and then the people accepted that. And this is also interesting because this is kind of a social peer pressure, because people can see if their team partner answered or not. And when I know I have my lab day on Wednesday, and my team partner did not answer on Tuesday, I will probably tell the team partner, please do this thing. And this is also very helpful for me as an instructor because I don't have to run after them. They do it themselves. Mm -hmm. Next part, lab part. So there, they, they all have individual logins to this e-learning system, but for the lab part, they see the same answers. Because this is a team effort, so they have to answer and discuss together and write it down in the system. Then also, next very important thing, a system enforced deadline. Before it was always the case that it was Sunday night, people were writing the Monday morning to their free candidates. The sooner I introduced this one, it totally stuck. This was also amazing. I wouldn't have thought that before. But it happened. Okay, so this is what we have briefly. And this one is bound to the schedule. Also important aspect, transparency. So I try to be transparent with everything I do there. When the people know the rules and they know the system does the following and they see it really does that, they're okay with that. This is also very, very helpful in Tool. Correction, I will not go too much into detail for that one today, but this one is also very important. So when they went through this one week cycle or two week cycle, because actually they have the lecture and then they do the practical part the week after, once they are here, the most important thing they need for learning is they need a fast correction, so they need fast feedback. And I have these multiple choice questions, they are self-correcting here, but for the practical part, they have to write three texts. And so this is what we correct. So they actually going to have two tutors for um, 20 students. So this is the amount. And they uh, and I pay them for about five hours each of them. So it's 10 tutoring hours 
per week for 20 students. That is put there, in there, which is comfortable. So one could also go with, with lower amount. And the correction is also happening in the e-learning system and when you remember back these handwritten answers. So the good thing is when you have the online tool, you can read it easily. And you can also compare it easily. So this is also something that I do a little bit research about right now, automatically comparing answers to support the tutors in your job. And last thing, everything's corrected. Then they can see the answers. In fact, they can even see partial answers here. So the soon the correctors agree that the things are correct, then they can see this part already. And then we have a 4i principle. That means I when I'm the first corrector, then I do this. And then they can set the answers green, and then the second corrector goes through it again and puts it green. If things are unclear between the tutors, then of course we look on it and then we set it green. Okay. Then oral attestation. So this is about 10 minutes. And uh, this is also something as a side note, something very interesting. Because actually, so this one, this one is taken typically in the in the, for the graduates, so it's in the master level, but it's also open for bachelor students. And even for the masters, we are often the first oral exam that they have, because they just have written exams before. And this is then also something um, important and interesting for them to see. Um, here a summary again, so the lecture is about 90 minutes in the lecture room. The initial preparation one is three hours, and in the lab one day in the week, and here about 10 hours for 20 students within, within one week. And everything there again, where is internet. So this is also quite helpful for the students because they don't have to be on campus to do the correction work. Okay. And here I put like the forced good student because for me, the, the ideal student is a student when, when she has a lecture, afterwards she's looking at the material and then she's experimenting with it, and then she's remembering it again. And as a normal student is not necessarily following this pattern, I somehow implemented this workflow to force them to be the good student. So this is why I put this note here. Okay, next part, tools. So here's the setting again. So we have the lecture, we have the individual preparation, which looks like that. The practical teamwork, so here you see the two computers where they are sitting. This is the lab room actually, so here you see we have many teams at the same time in this room. And during the semester it's always like that, during week, and even sometimes on weekends. And uh, yeah, so this is, this is the campus building, and uh, yeah, as a short break, a video where we get into the, the lab room. Okay, and here, why did I show you that? An important factor is also that the people feel cozy, so that they feel nice with the learning, and they are also happy with the environment. So spending time on cleaning the room up and putting pictures on the wall and so on is also worth doing, because when, they, when the people don't like their environment where they spend six to eight hours a week, then they don't like going there. And uh, this, is a, this is also a very important factor. Okay, back to the, to the tools. So um, I always record the lectures and provide it to the students. At the same time, the attention to this lecture part of the course is mandatory because I want to discuss with them. So this is more if someone was sick, you can look at it again or for the learning for the exam. So there, of course, we have the same access patterns like when you do lecture recording short before the oral attestation and then you pull out the video somewhere. Then in the um, pre-lab, we have texts that are explaining something. So this is basically like an interactive textbook. And uh, in there you have the multiple choice questions that you have to answer that are for your motivation. And then you have access to this overview page here where you see your own performance and anonymized how the others performed, which is also a kind of a gamification element so they see the ranking in the group, if they are better or worse than half of the group, for instance. And they also see with the icons on the right side if their team part has already finished or not.
understanding for the instructions. So this was also something to learn. So when I did the first step from the book to the online environment, I thought, okay, I want to have the answers in the online environment and have the text on the paper. So this didn't work at all. So avoid media breaks because they will not digest it the well you hope for. Then we have the pretext samples here that are inline. They don't need additional reports. For the grading, there's cross-correction, also very important to make it fast and also fair. And then there's also course management inside the e-learning system. So basically all the burdens that you have when doing the teaching are somehow taken away from you by putting more into these online systems. Now how does it does it look when you, when you look at it, at it practically? So this is the this is a typical lab. So this is how it looks like. And uh, this is what I always tell the students when, when I inform them about the, the course. And uh, one important thing is, of course, always the content. So having up-to-date content, especially in computer science, always challenging. And then diversity in the teaching, I was talking about it, clear flow of the exercise. So this is also important that they know, okay, this is where it goes. Getting the expected results is guaranteed, also very important. And questions inline, no additional reports. So here we see the structure on one page. So typically, you don't do it in this view here, but you would have different pages everywhere where you have a headline here. This is also important, distribute the content in your e-learning environment for two reasons, definitely. So the first one is people don't get shocked. So when I show them, okay, this is the e-learning content, please go through it in the next 20 minutes, they're like, oh my God. And the second is that they also see their progress. When they scroll, virtually three kilometers down. They also see their progress, but they're somehow lost. In the case that you have it distributed, what happens in, in my tool is that you have the menu, and then in the menu you see how you move through the course. And then you get further down, then you're at point seven of eight or something like that, and then you know, okay, I'm almost finished. So when you look at online tools like edX, for instance, then it's also similar. You have the elements on the top and move through them. Okay, so now let's scroll a little bit down. So here you see these multiple choice questions. Also important here, whenever you answer correctly or wrongly three times, you get an explanation why the answer is correct. This is important to because it could just be luck. Okay, I clicked something, but I don't know why I did it. And it's a um, it's a not not present event. So when people go through your multiple choice questions, you're not there to talk to them and interact with them. So you have to put everything online. Um, so there, also something I'm, I'm looking at, I was looking at also with the teaching department, what you can also experiment with is feedback that is context sensitive. So if someone clicked a certain point, then you give them feedback in the positive or in the negative way that is context sensitive to what they clicked. So this is also an interesting, interesting one to have this, to have a little bit more specific feedback even though it's automated. Okay, learning support, mandatory pre-lab, instantly correcting so that you can learn from your errors, multiple choice questions, fast correction, redundancy, so that you do multiple times things that you consider very important learning goals, and uh, also the oral exams are very important for the learning success of the student. Um, let's scroll further down. So, yeah, teamwork help each other, very important. The entire course is in English, so this was, when I came to Munich in 2008, this was one of the few um, practical exercises that were entirely in English. And so it's, it's still, and the good thing was I always got the international students there for, which was quite nice, because then people also got this intercultural skills of working together with people from other locations that are not Germany. And, and this is also one of the, one of the skills I tell them of, of course, you learn networking content, but you also learn debugging, English, and other things. And uh, for this one here, so I was telling you that it's always challenging to get um, to get new content into your lab courses. And uh, one thing I'm doing in this course here is that one <coughs> assignment for them that goes for six weeks is creating mini assignments themselves. So. It turns out that computer science students are 
often skilled or very skilled in certain aspects. So because they're working at the same time at a company deploying servers or whatever, and there I tell them, okay, look at a problem that you want to work on, and then in six weeks they create a mini assignment, and then we improve that one, and if it's good enough, then we can offer it from the next term on. And this is this turned out to be quite efficient for also getting new materials in. Of course, you cannot typically not take what they created directly, but at least you have a starting point. And this is also something that is very important for the soft skills, because there they learned how to speak to a group, how to create tutorial materials, and so on, which are also skills that, um, at least at TU Munich, are often missing because they don't get it in other courses. But I consider them very important for their professional work life afterwards. Um, yeah, so this is a practical part. So there you have a free text input where they can write something. And yeah, what is important is also here at the bottom that they always have this feedback field here. So they have a structured way of giving us feedback about something. But as I said before, even though the feedback field is there since 2003, um, only introducing a one-click, I open a context-sensitive ticket, introduced again that they could, uh, that they started giving more feedback. Because even just scrolling to the end and entering something into this form here was too much of a burden for them to give feedback and put into it. Okay. Good. So feedback. I said it already. So um, the entire course is about self-learning. So the people are supported in their self-learning. And they get certain feedbacks for that one, so they get a model choice results, they get the ranking in the group, they get discussion with others, they get credit support, they get the correction comments, also very important when students are correcting and they are deducing credits that they give those whom they corrected clues about why did we deduce credits, because then they can, can learn from it. Discussion at the lecture, exam feedback of course, and the exam mark of course. Then for us as teachers, this is also the same stuff is also helpful of course. So we have the oral exam impression, so the perspective here is again, it's a distant learning scenario most of the time, because people are interacting with the e-learning environment and they normally don't have questions. So we as teachers don't see them too often. I mean, we see them every week, but we do not interact with them for this, for this specific course material. So we are exam impression, discussion at the lecture, of course, then the lab credits is something that we see for the team, and then the normal interaction, of course, when they come to us, and um, also the feedback that we receive and that we also give them. And, of course, the multiple choice um, results that we have there. Okay, so now the content part. So um, this is the life of one of my exercises. And uh, it's born somewhere, then it's growing up, and then it's sometimes later an adult. And uh, so what happens there, so when, when you create an exercise, of course you do internal tests at the beginning, then you do the first student run, and then you get feedback. So all the elements that I was talking about here. And then you do a revision, and then you run it again, and then you're somehow stable, so you think the exercise is okay. And then the important thing is, so this is here, that you don't stop there, but that you do again the cycle and do the updating here. And so this is, in a nutshell, what I do with them in this six weeks part. So I explain them how are the didactics, how do you structure learning content when you create it. I give them the tools, and then I go with them through this phase. And uh, then they create their learning material, and then they have a team that is assigned to them as a review team. And then they do a review cycle. This is in the, in the third week, in the fourth week roughly. And then they get feedback. So there I teach them how to give structured feedback and then they update their material and then at the end um, we have something that is hopefully somehow stable. And then we, in the next semester we offer them the topics that we consider relevant and that we consider well enough to 
prepared so that we can improve them within a limited amount of time. And then, in the course, they have one um, slot where they can choose two of the exercises from this pool. So I have a fixed set of assignments. Once I have two, that they are free, they're free of choice. And this is then something that can come from this pool. And when they choose a certain exercise, then we improve the exercise and then we run it. Okay. Now to the, to the evaluation. So, um, yeah, since I'm in Munich, I started at some point in time to do some structured evaluation. And um, so one thing that, so the Fachschaft is doing that, and so one thing we're asking the students there is if they are able to address problems typical to the subject matter of the course. And uh, so this is the feedback of 378 students here. And uh, as you can see, so this is, this is the typical feedback that we also get there. So the, the typical feedback is the course takes really a lot of time. So we cannot recommend it to people who want to do little work and get easy credits, but we learned a lot. So this is the typical feedback that I get from the students. Why I say, okay, this is fine for me. This is okay. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's just nice to see that, that, they, uh, that they also see it so positive. And here it's, I'm able to select appropriate methods and procedures to solve course-related problems. So this is also a, a key learning goal, of course. So they get to know the tools and methodologies that they want to go for, and then they're able to use them later on their own. This is also the positive feedback I was telling them, like, okay, this is something that I could actually use in my job. And uh, the overall practical teaching is well organized, in my opinion. So as you see, I thought a lot about how to structure this teaching. And so we iterated through it over the past 15 years, and uh, it's good when you get that feedback so that the students also see, okay, it's structured. Of course, I also foster this because I always explain to them, okay, this is the structure, this is what we do. Um, but they also encourage you to do that. So be transparent to them and tell them what to do and why you do it. Because it, in the worst case, they will just ignore it. In the best case, they will do something with this information. Yeah, and then I just put some, uh, some testimonials. Um, so they are very nice, selected, of course, and everything. They are just like three, three of the testimonials that we get. They're like, okay, it's good, organized. And uh, yeah, it's also, it's also good what they learned there. So this is also an interesting feedback because there are two courses and the, the one course, so this is basically about how the internet works. And this starts more tutorial style and goes more like open afterwards. And the second course is about selected topics more in depth. And especially the first course, this is often the first time where people even get into contact with Linux. And so this is then very good for them to get to know the tooling that they need probably later in almost every job that they do that is computer science related. And uh, yeah, also someone who likes e-learning system, very good. Plus points. <laughs> okay, and so, so this is where we started. And so it turns out that when applying the, the concept that I was talking about, then um, what happens is that even if you don't have so many instructors, you can still have a, a very high teaching quality. Especially, um, what is especially interesting with that methodology is that it scales very well because the correction of the first teams takes the longest time. So if I have 20 students or if I have 30 students, it doesn't make that much of a difference when I'm correcting something. Because this, this is also important, the correctors, they see exactly the same, the same view that the students see. So they see all the instructions directly in place and then they see the answers. This is also very helpful because they don't have to look anything up. They can just follow the flow and then they know it okay. And uh, for this correction, we also separate the parts in two halves. And so one is then the expert for the first half and goes through that one and then only back checking the second one and the other way around. And this turns out to be very, very efficient and to scale very well. So in the one, in the course ILAB 1, we have about 40 students each term, and in the ILAB 2, I restricted it to 20. So that means every semester we have 60 students going through this workflow in the two courses. And in the Maxcom online course, um, well, there, let's see how many people we will have. Okay, so, um, 
Yeah, maybe I briefly, well, for one minute, tell you also something about this Metzger of Mormon course, because this is also related to the to the digital teaching I'm doing in this academy, Franco Almond. So, um, one thing that is currently um, interesting for the for the teaching community are so-called micromasters. So this is a term that the edits coined. So who heard about this micromasters program already? Okay. Um, so the idea there, if I got it correctly, is that in the US, the universities are very expensive, and so they say, okay, if you don't want to pay the tuition fees here, you can do this course in edX, and then it counts for part of your bachelor's studies. And then you can bring it in, and then you continue doing the on-site training where you then have to pay for it. TUM doesn't have any tuition fees, so there this model is not, uh, not so relevant. But what I'm currently experimenting with, and what I will start also in um, July, is a course that the people will have as a first part a fully online course in this mass of online course environment. And then they will go through it and I will look at okay how well did it work or not work. And then in the second part I will have them in place and assess okay how good did they get the information there. And then they will do three exercises that are in the normal um, curriculum that I showed just here. And so this is something that in this academy can quite want. We are looking at how can you put more digital elements in a, in a um, successful way into the teaching so that the workload then goes again down from the teachers because in that course that I was just talking about I will effectively then ideally have just half of the load because half of the course will be entirely inside this online system. Of course at TUM it's not about that I take the grades that they have from the online course and I expect that these are the only grades, mm -hmm. therefore I will have to do an oral exam with them about this part as well, because they could have cheated, it is a problem of the online course as well. All right, so um, yeah, so this is a big thanks to all the team members I was working on 2004 on, and uh, yeah, this is also a very big gift for me that I had always people that were also eager to do good teaching and that helped making this course even better, especially also for this um, lab environment thing where you have to maintain the computers, make sure the operating systems are always reset and to the stable state and so on. Okay, good. That was it from my side. Thank you. Thank you.